Hi, my name is Gloria White, and today is June the 27th, 2022, and I'm here with Annette Spike, and we're here at the Heritage Museum in Conroe, Texas, and this video is sponsored by the Heritage Museum of Conroe, Texas. Hi, Annette. How are you? Good morning. Well, it's afternoon. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. It. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. Up. Oh, good. Hey, uh, first question. Were you born here in Montgomery County? No, I, I wasn't. I was born in San Saba, Texas. Have you ever heard of that? No. Uh, where is that located in Texas? It's in Central Texas. Central Texas? Close to Lampasas, Lomita. Uh-huh. And uh, so that's where I was born. But in the 50s, when there was so much polio going around, mm -hmm. I had an uncle a cousin and my brother all had polio. So my parents moved right away to San Antonio to get him treatment. And consequently, he, he was never crippled from it because of that. So I grew up in San Antonio okay. after that. And I guess I was 10, 11, uh -huh. maybe. It's okay, so that's where your family grew up. Did you go to school in San Antonio too? Did you go to school in San Antonio? I did. I went to Harlandale High School, and then uh, I uh, I wanted to go to college, and yet I needed more money to go to college. So I worked at Kelly Air Force Base. I had two really good jobs at Kelly Air Force Base, and at that time there was Randolph and Lackland and uh -huh. Kelly and all the big uh, air bases were there. But I had a, a really, we had a really good neighbor that kind of had some authority at the, at the bases. So he got me a really good job and it was very tempting just to stay there and work. Uh -huh. But I was determined I was gonna go to college. So I went to Howard Payne College in Brownwood, uh -huh. Texas. Okay, okay. So, so you, so did you from from Howard Payne College in Brownwood, Texas? So when did you actually come to Montgomery County? We came in in '62. We got married. Uh, when you say we, you're talking Grady. about okay. Tell Grady us about what did you mean, Grady? Went to Howard Payne. Okay. Yes. And, Tell us about that. And so he. Uh, he wanted to get married before I was out of school. Mm -hmm. So um, he got a job in Coleman, Texas. That was a wonderful experience for us. Most of the people who lived there uh, had farms or ranches. And so he, he was coaching, he got the job. And when he got a job, then we went ahead and got married. And I uh, drove back and forth to school for a semester. Uh -huh. Then we both did our student, well, I did my student teaching in Coleman, and I wouldn't have traded for that time at all. But he wanted to learn football, and he thought that um, C.D. York was probably about the best football coach in Texas, because Chuck has already, had already won I think two or three um, state championships. Uh -huh. So he wanted to come <clears throat> to Conroe to learn football. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So Chuck uh, hired him, uh -huh. and we both came in '62. Um, Topsy Wilkerson was. Um, Superintendent. Okay. I see it. Conroe Independent School District. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, so he hired us, and if he hired Grady, he had to hire me too. But um, they had just opened the new high school, and I remember Mr. Wilkerson saying, um, <clears throat> Well, they built that high school out in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> We, we both got a job at the same time. They, they made the old Travis Junior High School, mm -hmm. out, uh, which was the high school. It was the high school. They made it into a junior high and, and moved the high school out to 105. So Caroline Cryer and I 
and um, Courtney Williamson um, set up the PE program for girls. Okay. That was great too. That was so fun because we didn't have to, we didn't have to have interscholastic sports. We just got to teach them dance and tumbling and and the different rules mm -hmm. of the sports. And um, and I, I got to teach them how to walk and how to stand and how to introduce themselves and all of those kinds of things. And we, we had a great PE program. And this was at uh, the Travis Junior High School. Right, uh -huh. the one on Thompson Street. On Thompson Street, Street here, yeah. okay. And, uh, <clears throat> and I think all the girls had had a good time too, except that we had those one piece red gym suits, and the girls did not like those. In fact, still today, they, t <laughs> they tell me how much they hated those <laughs> red gym suits. But um, <clears throat> also, someone else that uh, Mr. Mc Jimmy Montgomery was was principal oh, at, uh, and, um, at Travis or Colonel High? At, at, the junior high. The junior high school, yeah. okay. He he later went to high school, okay. but he was in the junior high then. And um, Billy Carr, a lot of people will remember Billy Carr. Billy was kind of uh, Mr. Montgomery's sidekick uh -huh. because Billy would go around and pick up all the absentee slips because then we hung them on the door you know, outside the door, and Billy would come by and pick up those absentee slips. And um, <clears throat> so he, he ran all the errands for Mr. Montgomery. Um, Joy Montgomery taught at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> Grady and I used to go up to their place at Richard's quite a bit. Because Grady and uh, Mr. Montgomery were great friends, okay. so they had a good a good friendship with each other. But we uh, then Mr. Montgomery went to high school, then Grady went to high school, mm -hmm. and uh, started coaching. Um, he, he well, he coached a little while with W. T. Stapler, uh, but. He stayed at the high school until about right at 1969. Okay. And I, I wanted to quit teaching so I could stay home with my boys. Mm -hmm. And so he got a job with Jack Clark, who had the Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, um, soft drink company. Okay. And he worked with them until, oh, up into the 70s. And then he went to work for the Dr. Pepper Company. And then um, <clears throat> somewhere there along, a little past that time, he decided that he was going to run for JP at Precinct 2. Okay. So that was, that was in 1990 that he decided to run for that position. And, um, and he loved it. Uh, he loved working with people of various differences. Mm -hmm. You know, some had lawsuits against the other uh, that was less than $10,000. And then he, um, he was able to take care of the truants in school and the other infringements at the school. And he really did like working with the kids, and he was very effective with them the too. So that's where his life ended, was as JP of Precinct Two. Too. And I, uh, I went back to teaching after 1971, still taught at Travis. And so what, what, what were you teaching when, when, you, when you went back to school? Uh, I, I, I taught reading. Reading that when you went back? And I got so interested in why kids were getting to the eighth grade and not reading that I, um, I went back to school. I got a master's degree in teaching reading. 
and I did a special reading program that was um, called Reading Recovery, and it was very new in our department, in our school district, but um, it was very effective. It was developed in New Zealand. Okay. And the, uh, <clears throat> the the illiteracy rate in Australia was like 1%. Wow. So all the kids were learning to read, and I got really interested in that. So when I went back to school, I, um, <clears throat> I taught reading. And then at our school, I became the, the re reading liter literary teacher. <laughs> and I was able to teach some of the other uh, teachers okay. also. So we had a great reading program. Oh, At that time, um, Mike Fithian was principal. I know who was going to say the name again. Mike Fithian. Fithian, he, okay. He was out at Austin Elementary School. Okay. And, and Austin was kind of like another district. It was in the east part of the county, wasn't it? Was it was in Cut and Shoot. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I taught there um, until Grady passed away in, um, in 1999. Okay. So, so how many uh, kids did you all have? Two. Okay. Two boys. Two boys, okay. And as it, as it ended up when... Um, Trey had just gotten out of college, and he wanted to, he, he went before um, uh, Judge Sadler and asked him if he might finish his dad's term, because they were going to appoint, appoint somebody to take his term. And so Trey discussed it with me, and he said, do you think they would let me finish dad's term? He just had two years. Uh -huh. And so he went to uh, Judge Sadler, and they discussed it along with some of the other commissioners. And <clears throat> so Barb called me and said, you know, I think we're going to let Trey fill that position um, for his dad. And he said, I think what it will do is is it will get some other young people interested in running running for county offices, and it did. Mill Stewart, right after that, ran for a, a, a county judge, and then Brandon um, Creighton mm -hmm. ran, and so it, it kind of just opened the door a little bit for the younger Generally. men to mm -hmm. run for office. So it accomplished what Judge Sadler thought it was going to accomplish. Well, now Trey has been in office for 22 years. He's never had an opponent run against him. And um, so we've kind of kept the JP office in our family uh -huh, uh -huh. since Grady ran. And uh, Gr Grady loved that job. He said... Um, you know, if I'd known what this was like and how many people I, I would get to work with, I would have wanted to have done it forever, even though he loved coaching too. So, but um, anyway, we've just kind of stayed involved in the, in the county government all these years. Mm -hmm. And I know you uh, do a lot of, uh, you're part of a lot of different organizations in the county too. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, how did you, because I know you, you, you said you was like the literary uh, teacher uh, back in, I think, when you was at uh, Travis Junior High School, and I know you do a lot of uh, work now in, a, in the county with different organizations. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, it, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's funny how in life things just happen. You're not necessarily planning on them, but... Um, when Eileen, Dr. Eileen Arnold took over the Conroe Symphony, uh, it was not long after Grady had passed away, and she asked me if I would start um, a symphony league of women to, you know, have fundraisers and that kind of thing. And it was it was at a good time for me. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed to, to do that. 
So we started a symphony league, and, and we were the fundraising arm of the symphony. And all of the Conroe symphonies at that, uh, symphony players at that time um, were volunteers, and they all had something to do with starting the symphony. And so, um, anyway, it just was a good partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Arnold was a, a great uh, leader, and she really made a place for the Conroe Symphony in Conroe. And then at the same time, also, um, the person who was over the orchestral program at CISD, uh, also, she had to organize the symphony. And so, um, anyway, we just had a good group of people who enjoyed music, and uh, and I play the piano, so I've, I just have always been around music, music. and love music. So that just kind of led to another thing. Back in the, <clears throat> I don't exactly know what year it was, but the city of Conroe used to have a a commission on arts, uh -huh. and um, they would give a small amount of um, funding to the different arts groups, and then there was only about seven arts groups. And so they kind of suggested, or maybe it was Jana Patrick, Patrick that suggested this, uh, but they suggested that we start um, <clears throat> an arts alliance. And so that's eventually what we did, and the city kind of turned all that over to the arts, arts alliance. alliance. Okay. Well, when I first started, there were only about seven. Now there's 18. Arts alliance in the uh -huh. city of Conroe? And uh, they're all in Conroe, yes. Uh, everything from literary to, to symphony to choirs, uh, to, um, we even have some FEM uh, organizations mm -hmm. in our organization. So we, we've made a lot of strides with the Arts Alliance, and I've been working with them, I guess, since about 2000, maybe. No, not quite that long, probably. Maybe 2015. Okay, so seven years. And so uh, we still have regular meetings. The Heritage Museum mm -hmm. is a member mm -hmm. of the Arts Alliance. And so we have a, a group of different kinds of arts. So it's been a, a, a very effective arts organization. And then the city has gone along with us, and they've gone from having $60,000 in funding to 200000 over the years. And so that's been so appreciated by the city of Conroe mm -hmm. that shows that they appreciate the fact that we are doing something in the arts. So uh, the old school over here off of Lewis Street, I think is a jet. Uh, yeah, it used to be East, the Sam Houston, Houston Sam Elementary Houston School. School. So uh, they, uh, um, is the city, uh, suppo I think they're going to be turning it into some kind of type of arts, uh, cultural center for arts. They Can you have, talk about that? They bought it uh, from, from CISD. <clears throat> CISD was using it as a training um, center for teachers. And... Um, so they they made a deal with them to to buy it. The city, I mean, the school district is probably going to be relinquishing it pretty soon because they have a new one built down at the um, Wood Forest Stadium okay. on that uh, property. Mm -hmm. So uh, as soon as they um, give it up for the city to take it over. The city's planning to build a, um, a visual and performing arts center in that building, and it's quite large. I mean, we, there's plenty of room for all 18 organizations to have, a, um, to have space in there. 
there's uh, there's two stories and then there's a basement and uh, they're also looking at building another um, performance hall rather than trying to use that one because it's broken up into school rooms mm -hmm. and so it would be too well it, it wouldn't make sense yeah. to try to make that into a seating auditorium so they're looking at building about an 1800 seat facility wow and so um, <clears throat> the studio red in houston has uh, drawn some plans but you know everything has a cost uh -huh, everything so that's something that's going to have to be uh, considered primarily but but they're moving ahead on it. Our mayor's for it, and our city council people are for it. So, and, and Conroe really needs a larger place. Yeah. As much as we love the Owen and we love the Crichton. The seating <clears throat> capacity is limited in those facilities. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, uh, we can't have um, a, a big name person that we could charge very much for our tickets because there's just not enough seats. <clears throat> so um, we, we need a bigger facility where they can have bigger entertainers. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be a, a real money maker for the, city, the city of Conroe. Yeah. So anyway, those are the plans. Oh, that's good. So, so, you, so you are in the uh, symphony, and so you're also part of the Arts Alliance. And so, you, do you play for? The, do you play the piano when you all perform? No, I, I'm not a concert pianist. Yeah. I just, um, I just play. You know, I play to church, and my dad bought me a piano from the church when I was like six or seven years old, and I just learned to play it. Wow! And so. Um, I, but, but I never, um, you know, I didn't study to be a concert pianist, but I have a lot of fun playing it myself, though. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's good to know. I didn't know you was a piano player. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you're in the community in the Arts Alliance. So what do you uh, like to do when you're not uh, doing anything with the Arts Alliance? Well, <clears throat> I'm involved with church some, of course. And... Um, and my son has a ranch out in central Texas. Okay. I, I go out there a lot. I enjoy doing that. Do you ride horses? No, but my grandkids do. Okay. So, um, and it's only 16 miles away from where I was born. Wow. And I still have some aunts and uncles who mm -hmm. live there. So, mm -hmm. so you got two boys, and how many grandkids do you have? Five. Five grandkids. Trey has three girls. And uh, Barclay and, and or Trey and Amanda have three girls, and then Lacey and Barclay have a boy and a girl. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So we we have a great little family. So and uh, Barclay has a business here, and then Trey's been in the business for 22 years. Yeah. Wow. I re I do remember when that transition when he took over from his dad, but I don't. 22 years has been a long time. They don't seem like it's been that long, but yeah. I do remember that. Uh -huh. I know. And I know uh, Grady has a, a, a statue in front of Conroe High School up there. Can you tell us a little about that statue and how, the, and how they came about? That was one of the classes of boys that he taught in football. It was 1978. And um, Bill McLawn was a sculptor that graduated from Conroe High School and, and he, he'd made pretty much of a name for himself. And so he had always wanted to give um, a statue to Conroe High School. So right after Grady passed away, that class came to us to ask if we could put uh, Bill's a sculpture of his tiger there in memory of Grady. And uh, they were able to raise enough money to do the whole whole tiger. Mm -hmm. And so it's been there since 
mm, I guess it was 2002 maybe. And then the, the high school with all the renovation that's going on right now, they're, they're going to move that tiger to the back of the building which is then going to be the front of the oh. building. <laughs> the uh -huh. back, 105 is going to be the back of the school when they get finished with it. And um, so they're moving that tiger around to the, the front oh. of the gym, the new gym they're uh -huh. building. So there's a big change going on yeah, out I, I, there. Yeah, I see the school and it's almost, it's really exciting when I when I see all the changes they're doing at the Cardinal High School. But that's it's good to know that uh, the statue will have a, uh, always have a spot there, and uh, it's the front of the building. And so when he taught, he was a football coach. Yes. How how many years did he coach at Cardinal High School? Uh, let's see. He quit when Trey was born. That was sixty nine. Um, so about seven years. Okay, seven years. And uh, he loved coaching. You know, the thing about Grady is that he loved everything he was doing. I don't think he ever did anything he didn't enjoy doing. But um, he taught until Trey was born, and I wanted to stay home and raise the boys. Mm -hmm. So he went to work for Clark Bottling Company. so I could stay mm -hmm. home. Okay. And then as soon as they got in school, I went back to teaching. Okay. Yeah, and uh, did you... Uh well, I know during that time, so his position was the elected position, uh, Grady, when he ran for J.C. Did anybody run against him back when he ran for the position? He did at the very first year. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there were about four, I think, who ran against him, and then there was a, a runoff uh, at the end of, of that election. But nobody ever ran against him again. And... Um, you know, that, that just gave him an opportunity to work with so many people. Um, everybody from, from kids in school to kids who got in trouble, and he particularly liked that because he'd been working with the, the high school kids for so many years. And, um, but then there are several other facets in that particular uh, position too. You've got the um, traffic ticket, well not traffic ticket so much, but you've got traffic infringements, mm -hmm. you've got um, <clears throat> uh, small claims, just a variety of things. So he never had the same thing to do at one time. Okay, it was it's always, always different. Always different. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you could do marriages, mm -hmm. and he enjoyed doing that. Yeah, uh -huh. So, did he do divorces too? No, <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. <coughs> no, no divorces, just, uh -huh. just, just marriages. marriages yeah. okay. okay, and so was the office? I, I think I don't was I can't remember if it was downtown. What was his uh, J uh, J precinct two? His office located when he was serving. Well, in, in the beginning. It was in the new in, uh, law enforcement center oh, okay. over on First Street. Mm -hmm. And then after Trey got into office, they needed more space in the law enforcement office, so they built another building um, right on First Street. Okay. And that's the JP building now. But when Grady was in office, it was in the law enforcement building. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you came here, uh, if I remember correctly, you and Grady in 1962. Uh -huh. Okay. So since that time, 1962, do you did you experience any kind of any uh, disasters in our area, like floods or hurricanes or anything like that during that time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know. What I remember most of all is we've been in West Texas, and and you know, we had dust storms, mm -hmm. and and we would have freezing storms. I mean, I remember having my clothes hanging on the line when a, a cold freeze would come in and the clothes would freeze before I could get them in. But the dust was really bad, too. And so when we came first came to Conroe, I thought we had made one big mistake because we, I don't know if, if um, 
if you all would have known um, Mr. Samuels that lived over on Avenue E Street. He, he was probably quite a bit older than y'all were, but we rented a house from him. And it was just um, maybe half a block away from the railroad track. And we didn't have any any refrigerated air because in where we had been, we added humidity to the air instead mm -hmm. of taking it out. So we brought our um, air cooler with us and we only had a, a boat. We did. We had a car and we had a boat. That was the first thing we bought was a boat because we lived where there was a lake. Okay. And Grady skied, I did too, so we just, you know, had a good time all the time. But the first week or two we were here, it rained every day. And, and we could hear the train two or three times at night. So in just a few days, every pair of shoes that Grady had and I had mildewed in the closet. And I thought, this is not the climate that <laughs> I was thinking we were coming to. But we lived there um, for just a, a, a few weeks. And you may remember Pat George and Marsha George. Mm -hmm. um, they became our first friends and invited us to their house to spend the night for several days because they had a refrigerated air conditioner. Well, we thought we had just, you know, found the Savior when we found them. But we stayed with them a few nights until we could find, uh, well, we bought a, a refrigerated air conditioner for Mr. Samuel's house. But that was kind of the weather beginning of oh, our time in Conroe. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Because uh, so, I'd never been around humidity like this, and Grady hadn't either, because he grew up in uh, Cleburne, up near Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So this was a totally new new climate for us. Wow. Uh -huh. But we finally got used to it. So Yeah, y'all I'm like glad y'all stayed. I would never got a chance to meet y'all. <laughs> yeah. Well that was that was an interesting story. Uh also is there anything else that I hadn't asked you or something that you would like to share with the the people that would be listening to this uh video in the future? Well, um, Grady did serve as chamber president mm -hmm. for for uh, a while. And um uh, that was that was when Del Lago was still at near Montgomery. And so um, we, we had the very, we used to have the Chamber of Commerce banquet. It was called a banquet then at Conroe High School in the cafeteria. And the cafeteria ladies prepared our dinner. So this was the first year that we were going to get to have it out at Del Lago. Really nice new facility. So Grady was the president that, that year and we had Larry Gatlin come and um, was the entertainment mm -hmm. that year. And then from then on, it stayed out at um, Del Lago and then it was love um, La Toretta, La Toretta, mm -hmm. and then now it's Margaritaville. So, you know, it's made three transitions over the years since Del Lago was here. But, oh my goodness, we thought that was the nicest place when it was first built, and it was. It was a real nice yeah, place. It's mm -hmm. really nice. It was the only place that we had to have anything that big, and by then the woodlands had started also. Okay. But um, it, it was a little too far for people to drive down then, there then. And then I, I remember going to Houston to shop. Um, and there was no place to stop and eat between, between say, Northwest Mall mm -hmm. and Conroe, except there was a truck stop on, um, on 45. And there, there were no places to eat. Well, now there's one every, every block or so. <laughs> it is to eat. But when we first came here, then there was um, 
there were not many places to eat between Houston and Conroe. So. Wow, wow, I didn't, yeah, 1962, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Cause I do remember Del Lago and La Toretta nice Margaritaville. And uh, so you all didn't, did you experience any, uh, I don't know when this Hurricane Carla came through. I was a little girl though. I remember there was hurricane, there was a storm was in Galveston and it came because I had a, a, well, a sister and some of my cousin, they family, they came up. But I was, I just remember them coming, they was going to BDI because they lived in, in, in Galveston. Uh -huh. So they was coming and they stopped at uh, my house. And that was, I had to be about, I don't think I was in kindergarten, but I do remember them coming, but I didn't really understand the concept of a hurricane coming through because we didn't really get any damage right. up in Willis. Well, we did. There was a big one just before we came uh -huh, here. Before y'all came. Mm -hmm. Camilla, so y'all missed, uh, missed it. I don't remember you the all name missed of it because it was before we, just before we came. But then I do remember Rita being a pretty good yeah. mm -hmm. size hurricane and, um, and, and they always scared me, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, out, out in West Texas, we had big tornadoes and thunderstorms and, um, and big snowstorms. So it was totally different when we came down here. But we had a, a couple of pretty good size hurricanes. And one was after Grady was gone and um, I was really frightened then because I, <clears throat> I was mm -hmm. by myself and, and the boys were, you know, they were younger. And so, um, but, you know, we, since, since we've been here, we haven't um, experienced a really, really big one. I mean, they were big enough for me, but, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but they mm -hmm. weren't, you know, just devastating. Yeah. Ones. No disaster. So. so both of your boys were born here in Conroe. Uh, both of your sons were born here in Conroe. Yes, they were born at the yeah. hospital of our own first street. Uh, first street. Okay. Okay. Both of them were. Okay, that's where I was born and, too. Um, someone I'll always remember is is Maggie Dallin. She was the head um, obstetrics knife. Mm -hmm. Not well, nurse. And um, so I remember her going up and down the hall, talking really, really loud. We could all hear her from one end of the hall to the other, but she was always so happy. And we, it was a, a joy to have been in the hospital with her being the nurse for, for our babies. So, oh, wow. but they were both born there. They both went to Sam Houston mm -hmm. Elementary. Uh, when I was teaching at Travis, they would walk over from Sam Houston over to Travis, and I would always buy an ice cream for them at lunch and put it in the refrigerator in the nurse's office. So they would have an ice cream when they got to school. But And there were several other kids that walked from Sam Houston over to, to Travis uh -huh. also. Wow. So, and those were fun times yes. to have my boys in the school with me and we could, you know, we could go to school together and come home together and they played all the sports like football, basketball and so. So you were going, you were traveling a lot, going to, going to uh, their games and things, watching you play? More so when they were babies. When they were babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because by then, Grady had started, um, well, he was teaching in high school, but uh, we didn't seem to go to out-of-town games quite as much then, but I think he was still coaching, though. Um, but we didn't go, I didn't take them when they were real little to out-of-town games. Oh, yeah, okay. We would just go to Conroe High School okay. games. Oh, okay. Because okay. it was a little hard with him on the field and me trying to take care of the boys. But they were good boys. They still are. Oh, that's a blessing. So that's proud blessing. of them. That's a blessing. Well, uh, if you can think of anything else, you would like to, how would you like to end this interview? I, I really do thank you.
well, for your time? Well, I'm trying. I think you've covered most everything. Um, so how but, long, I, I didn't ask you one, how, how many years did you teach? I know you took a break in between. I taught eight years. Eight years, okay, uh -huh. okay, okay. And then um, it's so many of the kids that I taught then who were 13 and I was about 20 or 21, mm -hmm. 21 I guess, have become my friends as we've all gotten older. Uh -huh. And I, I think of that so often how that's not something that happens to many people that that I worked with them when they were young and then became friends Please, yeah. as we get older. So I have several, in fact, Wednesday, I've been invited to lunch with, uh, with the class that I very first saw, taught at uh, Travis. And they, they're all, you know, I feel like they're older than I am, but <laughs> they're not, <laughs> but, they, but I feel like they are. Uh -huh. But um, they've been so good to invite me to their reunions. Mm -hmm. I went to the 50th and 51st reunion this past year of two of the Conroe High School classes. So that's a wonderful thing. That's fun. It is. Yeah, that's a it truly thing. is. That's a wonderful thing. That's wonderful so thing. So I've been blessed to do that. And you know, traditionally, coaches do not stay in one place very long uh, because they're always looking for uh, either a head a head coaching job or a better coaching job. But Grady never looked for another job. He liked being here. We both did. And uh, so it's, it's really unusual that someone would stay in that position in a place like Conroe as long as we've been able to stay. Mm -hmm. well, you but that's time. been a sweet thing too. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that happened, of course. All right. Both the boys graduated from mm -hmm. Conroe High, High School. school. Um, Barclay went to University of Texas. Trey went to Sam Houston. Mm -hmm. um, and then they married, uh, Barclay married um, um, Lacey Sutherland. Her mom is married to Don Buckaloo. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, <clears throat> Trey married a girl from Friendswood who went to Sam Houston. Houston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So they both made good choices in wives, and I'm really proud of them. And then the kids, um, Trey's girls go, there's one at Reeves, one at Pete, and one at Conroe High School. Okay, so you got them spread out. Uh, mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. And then um, Barclay and Lacey's two go to Covenant Christian okay. together. Okay. So we're kind of spread out all over the district, too. Okay. So I know you are in the uh, arts alliance, and so do you have a particular, uh, other than alliance, do you have a particular one you prefer over the other? You just like being a part of the whole part? I, I just like having everybody together, together. Mm -hmm. to, to collaborate together. This past year, we had the first successful art festival. And um, Judy Lanza uh, got it organized, and it had a little bit of everything, everybody, uh, we had the symphony, we had the, uh, we had art, we had, um, well, every organization participated in it in some way. And so we hope to have an even bigger one next year. Is it an annual event? What can you mm -hmm. give us, let us know when, it, when it's held? It's the first week in March. Okay. First weekend in March. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it has, quite a bit of potential to be a, a really great festival. And so uh, Judy's going to be working on that again this, this next year. And it's, and it's held downtown Conroe? In yes. The Conroe area. Okay. It's, it's pre pretty much in Founders Park. Okay. And then we had a show at the Crichton and we had a show at the Owen last March. So uh, it, it'll probably just have a little variety to it, 
but um, we, we would like to continue having it as an event of the Greater Conroe Arts so Alliance. It's, it's annual event. Yes, yeah, so All right. everybody's involved in it. Okay. Well, I thank you so much, Annette Spikes. I appreciate your time <laughs> and your, uh, well, uh, this interview, and I thank you. Well, I thank you all. It's good to see you and Carl, and uh, I love what the Heritage Museum is doing. I just think it's such a great place for people to come visit. So thank you for well, your welcome. time in you're working welcome. with it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you.